Hi everyone, I thought I'd take a little break from Florida real estate with Ellen and have a working lunch and share with you what may be my last meal eating this most amazing product. Miyoko's Creamery, one of her many cheeses, that's the garlic herb, and this one is the classic chive. Just one of many incredible products that Miyoko Skinner developed over the years. And I must say that I am incredibly privileged to have been with her in those moments when she developed the artisan vegan cheeses that became the beginning of her business that she would start. And she talks very publicly about the number of businesses that she had that failed. But like so many of us who knew that this was the right journey and path to be on, she never gave up. And so she developed the technology and the uh, recipes to come up with her book called Artisan Vegan Cheese, which came out the same time my book did in 2011. And as a result, we did some of the very first veg fests. Um, I think actually my book came out first. So my first veg fest was the Toronto veg fest, which was terrifying. It was three days long in Toronto, my very first veg fest out of the country and a three day long veg fest, but it was incredible. And then the New York veg fest, it was the first year that they had a veg fest in 2011. And I'm not sure where Miyoko and I first appeared together, but I do remember that we appeared at the Chicago Veggie Fest, and that was, at the time, the largest veg fest in North America. 50,000 people held at the Sikh Temple campus in Chicago, and uh, it was only, when, when they started, it was only just cooking demos. So my publisher was very eager to have uh, Miyoko, who was a chef by training, uh, at least in, by her own experiences, and me, I was more the book author, but I could also, because I was a trained cooking instructor for Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and still am, um, I was able to do both, to be able to talk about just the topics of being a vegan athlete and chef, as well as being able to do the cooking demos. But with Miyoko, I remember we were in a hotel room, like a Motel 6 or one of those kinds of, of hotels, and my publisher would try and get a suite that had maybe a little kitchen in it, and we would spend literally all night, she would blanch or boil, and then blanch, which means take the skin off the almonds, and then um, put them through a cheesecloth or process them in a Vitamix, and I would help her do that. And so we worked side by side trying to get enough cheese made for her cooking demo. And this was not an easy project. But those are my fondest memories of Miyoko. Uh, another one was we appeared at the San Francisco Veg Fest and we um, also were, I think it was Seattle or Portland, wherever. Uh, there's a great chocolate company and we got to do, uh, we had a little spare time, so we got to do a little tour of that. And uh, you can see how we were wearing our little um, uh, hair net so our hairs wouldn't fall in any of the chocolate factories equipment but you know that was such a fun time and we just kind of as intensely as we worked we we loved um, playing together too and um, that was called Theo's chocolate I was trying to think of the name of the company and uh, amazing vegan chocolates and then we appeared at Health Fest which was a big veg fest in northern Texas in the heart of Cal uh, cattle country and um, all of us would give talks about our different book topics and Miyoko was there and so we go way back to see what she's gone through now is just been kind of mind-blowing and really all I can talk about is my feelings of compassion for somebody who has worked so hard and I just can't wrap my head around how when you work this hard build a company and then it gets bought um, how does it all then just kind of disappear the way it has and I'm sure we'll learn many more facts as things come out as you know I was a TV reporter and I know there's always multiple sides to a story but having known Miyoko personally and her work ethic and she's got this huge farm sanctuary now where she's at and I, I hope you know enjoying life a little bit because we work so incredibly hard on the road uh, not much sleep I remember one time Miyoko gosh she got no sleep uh, for one of the food demos maybe it was the Chicago Veggie Fest and she just worked all night preparing the food for her demo and that's the kind of person she is. And I know that she would go to bat for anybody. And I know that a lot of people have rallied behind her as all of this unfolds with the lawsuit that's been filed and her departure from her own company, this, the, being removed as the CEO from her own company. Now, I worked as a stockbroker at Smith Barney, so it, it's not necessarily uncommon to see these kinds of things happen, but just in the vegan universe, because we are such a tight-knit family and we really try to support each other anytime we can, that is why this is so hard, and we just want to try and rally behind her. And there is, you know, hashtag, hashtag 
boycott Miyoko that's going on, or Miyoko's Creamery, um, not Miyoko, Miyoko's Creamery, because it is the shareholders who are making, continuing to make money from this while Miyoko is no longer on, on, uh, on board with them, the, you know, as the CEO. So I just thought this is, I've had this at room temperature for just a little bit, and this is what has made her stuff so legendary, is that, you know, she created every, almost every kind of cheese made with cows now out of plants. And a lot of people actually prefer the taste of these mm. to cow's milk cheese. So why would you even need to eat cow's milk cheese? Mm. This is the garlic herb. So good. And she was so, and is, so creative with all the different cheeses and butters and spreads that she had. And this just incredible company that she built from scratch. So I've watched all of her lives, at least I think I have on Instagram and Facebook, just because... I care about her and I really want nothing but the best for her and everybody, including me, is saying multiple times, what can we do to help? Should we boycott the company in, in support? Um, on the other hand, her response has been, you know, my investors who were my friends and family who poured a lot of money into this company are the ones who stand to lose. So it's this double-edged sword and all I can say as a former TV, TV reporter, stay tuned and you know, together maybe we can figure out the best way to support her, whether it's through protesting the company as it moves on without her. You know, other people have said, can't you start another company? And you know, that all remains to be seen. And as we always said in television, at the end of a story, only time will tell. But it's just so sad that somebody whose heart, it doesn't get any more pure gold than what she has done to change the world, the planet, save the animals, and develop just an amazing amazing product line. How could something so right be so wrong, as an old song goes? I hope it gets figured out, and I only hope the best for her, and anything that we can do. People are urging her to start a GoFundMe account. I don't know that, it, as of this recording, I don't believe that has been started, but drop in the comments below if you have any thoughts about this, or any ideas you might have. We can save Miyoko. <laughs> just by supporting her and sending her our love, respect, and all the best wishes. So that's my take on it, and thank you for watching. Gotta run.